summary of flip flops in this session we shall discuss regarding all the flip flops and how to remember each and every issue i shall mention that one explicitly so please watch this video very carefully because for any kind of sequential circuit design whether it is a ram circuit design or register or any kind of counters this summary of flip flops will be required so at first we are going for the sr flip flop sr stands for set reset flip flop so this is the circuit for the sr flip flop we discuss about the details in the respective video always remember whenever in the clock logic we are having nand then in the flip flop logic we will be having nand whenever the clock logic is having and then the flip flop logic will be having nor whenever nand nand logic is there then s will have directly q so in the same in the same way if s is there then q will be there if you mark this one s then q should be written here and other one will be q1 q bar but if you go for and nor logic then s will be having q bar here and r will be having q here so remember these issues very carefully so for nand nand s will be facing q for and nor s will be facing q bar this is our characteristic table of sr flip flop what is the characteristic table we know that when the set is enabled output will be set means 1 when the reset will be enabled output will be reset that means 0 when set and reset neither one of them is enabled then there will be no change previous output will be the present output and whenever we are having one one that is indeterminate condition that is also known as rest condition and that is the main problem with our sr flip flop so now here we are having the respective excitation table so from 0 to 0 transition we are having 0x why 0x because just think that from 0 to 0 you can you can think this one in two ways either you are that is no change that there is no change in the output so that means the input should be 0 0 and the output is getting reset for the first for the next time reset then then the input should be input should be 0 1 so just club them merge them 0 0 and 0 1 the input should be 0 x so 0 to 1 can only be interpreted as the output is getting set so 1 0 set is enabled 1 to 0 transition can only be interpreted in one way that is output is getting reset so reset will be 1 set will be 0 and 1 1 1 means we can i can think this one in two ways either output is not getting changed so 0 0 input output is getting set so 1 0 input now if you want to merge it is x and it is 0 so that's why x 0 is there now i shall go for the d flip flop d flip flop is not a new flip flop it is simply a sr flip flop only s and r are getting connected through one not or inverter so here is the d flip flop where d will be facing q and basic logic of d flip flop is that present input will be going to the output after application of the clock pulse so the delay is the clock pulse period so present input will be the next output after application of the clock pulse so that is the basic theme behind d flip flop so now consider this uh, characteristic table here so present input will be the next output present input will be the next output so whatever output you require ultimately that should be the present input and that is the logic of d flip flop so again the same if the clock logic is having nand the flip flop logic will be having nand if the clock logic is having and the flip flop logic will be having nor now we are going for this jk flip flop when the clock logic is having and flip flop logic will be having nor clock logic is having nand then flip flop logic will be having nand if it is nand nor logic then k will be facing q and in case of nand nand logic k will be facing q bar and another change will take place that means q will be going here and q bar will be coming here but the feedback path to k will be going for q only so the path will be something like this so here this path will be taken from there and this path will be taken from there so there will be a crossover so in this way that is a case for the jkf flop using two different circuits 
Now, in case of JK flip flop, it is a, it is a 2 bit flip flop because J and K 2 bits are there. So, 4 input combinations can be possible and it is free from rest condition. So, here is the respective characteristic table for JK flip flop. So, for 0 0 it is QT, for 0 1 it is 0, for 1 0 it is 1 same as the SR flip flop, but for 1 1 it is Q but T. So, here it was indeterminate, but it is Q but T. So, 0 to 0 we can consider in two ways that means no change and set, no change and reset because 0 is there, no change and reset. So, input should be 0 x as I explained earlier. 0 to 1 can be thought in two different ways. What is that? That is set, set means input should be 1 0 or output is getting complemented input should be 1 1. So, 1 0 and 1 1 if you merge then you are getting 1 and x. So, you are getting 1 and x there. From 1 to 0 transition can be thought of in two different ways. Either the output is getting reset or output is getting complemented. For reset input should be 0 1, output should be complemented input should be 1 1. So, if you merge them it is x 1. So, that is why x 1. And 1 1 can be thought of in two different ways. Either it is set or no change. So, set means this one, no change means this one, if you merge them it is x0. So, that is our JK flip flop, that is the x addition table here. Next, we are going for the last one, that is our T flip flop. In case of T flip flop, the J and K terminal is getting shorted by, by, shorted by a simple wave. So, that is why they are getting directly shorted. And here is the clock pulse and here is the circuit diagram for the T flip flop. And similarly, here if the logic is AND, the flip flop logic will be NOR, if the clock logic is NAND, flip flop logic will be NAND in that case. And here T will be facing Q, but at that time T will be facing Q, but in this way you can think. But actually the thing is that also you can consider this one as T, you can consider that one also as T because both are getting shorted. So that is our T flip flop. So T flip flop means a special case of JK flip flop where T is equal to 0 means j k is equal to 0 0. So, that means t 0 means j k 0 0. So, q t will be the output and t 1 means j k t in case of j k it is 1 1. So, t 1 means j k is 1 1. So, that is we are having this q bar t here. So, now if we want to change in the output, do you want to change in the output? No, input should be 0. Do you require a change in the output? Yes, input should be 1. Do you require change in the output? No input should be 0. So, when input is 0, then there is no change in output. When the input is 1, there is a change in the output and that is the logic of T flip flop. In case of circuit design, sequential circuit design, we remember the sequence that is 0 x 1 x x 1 x 0. If you can remember this one, this particular excitation tables are very simple for D and T, they are very simple. But just remember, the respective sequence for the JK excitation table. So, it is 0 x 1 x x 1 x 0. If you can remember this one, it is very simple. It is 0 x, it is not 1 0, it is not 1 x, it is 1 0, then it is 0 1 and this is my x 0. So, that is why in the exam, one question may come that JK flip flop is more flexible than SR flip flop. How to answer this one? You can answer this one in this way that in case of 0 to 1 transition, in case of JK flip flop, I require to have 1 in J, but anything is allowed in K. But in case of 0 to 1 transition, we require 1 in S and 0 in R. For 1 to 0 transition, I require 0 in S and 1 in R, but here anything in J and 1 in K. So, that is another answer to prove that JK flip flop is flexible than SR flip flop. So, please remember the sequence that is 0 x 1 x x 1 x 0. Similarly, you can have this one as 0 x 1 0 0 1 and x 0. So, that is this is the respective excitation table for SF flip flop. Other, other excitation tables are quite simple. You can easily get it as when you want to recall it. Thanks for watching this video.